Hey folks, Chris Thoreau here from Seedleaf, and today I'm going to present the results from our experiment series, in particular looking at uh, sunflower microgreens cutting methods. So let's jump into things and take a look. So here's a little overview of the experiment, which I've talked a little bit about in previous posts already. What we are doing is te testing different microgreens cutting methods and their impact on product quality and storability, in particular at the cutting point at the end of the stem. And I'm doing that with two crops. I'm doing sunflower shoots and pea shoots. And after harvest, I'm doing them dr uh, directly into a bag or into a water bath and into a bag for storage. Uh, and then they are refrigerated. Now, right after uh, the either the cut or the cut and then water bath, I'm doing photos uh, of the stems to get a look at what they look like uh, over time. And then I'm documenting the cuts that I've made with each of these variations on day one, on day six, and on day 11. So here are my cutting methods. Just a pair of scissors I had laying around, a pair of kitchen shears that I use in the kitchen for herbs, my dull knife, as I call it, and what is also a very, very sharp knife. Now a little caveat, my dull knife did, turned out to not be so dull after all. So in general, the results for the dull knife don't matter too much in this experiment because we didn't get the results there that I would have expected with a very, very dull knife. Shift myself down here. So here we've got a little bit of a look at the setup I used. I was using a little USB microscope camera to get close-ups of the ends, as well as just using my regular camera on the macro setting to get a sense of not just the ends, but a little bit of the stem uh, as well. So my hypothesis here is basic that, you know, that the cuts made with scissors or shears are going to experience more oxidation or browning than cuts made with a sharp knife, and that the dull knife would actually have the worst results due to excessive tearing. Uh, again, the dull knife wasn't that dull, so that hypothesis is right out the window in this case. A few considerations here to keep in mind. I'm, I have in mind that microgreens often have a suggested shelf life of seven days, but growers make claims of a shelf life of up to two weeks or more. So this sort of thing helps us understand what that shelf life might look like and which method is going to give us the longest shelf life. And also that the browning at the end cuts doesn't necessarily make the crop inedible, but it does indicate a potential change in texture and flavor. And it also has a real aesthetic impact, which is going to make a big difference for some of your customers. So let's get into results. Uh, and what we are going to look at here is a series of images to give us a sense of what we experienced. There is no uh, official measuring in these uh, results. It's more just, this is what I see and this is how I interpret it. And so this is just uh, the semi-scientific method, a very uh, qualitative approach in this case. So here we are looking at scissors cuts on day one. And the thing I look for in scissors cuts is just roughness at the ends here slide myself back up here so I can stay out of the way. Um, yeah, just looking for roughness and an increased surface area due to the cuts. These ones actually turned out okay. Now we're going to look at scissors on day six. So we are seeing some browning we can see here uh, in both just the general shot and in the close-up, and we can really see the tearing in these ones, and that's where the browning is taking place. And then as we get into day 11, we're not actually seeing a lot uh, of, of deterioration. We lo we're looking about the same as we were on day six. So uh, that's actually a really good sign that we get some early oxidation, but it doesn't seem to, to worsen very quickly. So now we're looking at scissors with water. Uh, you again, using the scissors, you can see the roughness of some of these cuts in here, uh, a lot of surface area. Now day six, same thing, we are still seeing a little bit of browning on the ends, uh, but maybe a little less than we were seeing with the regular cut. And then on day 11, same thing, like this is still looking not bad, but some variability. We see a few here that are in pretty rough shape. Obviously this one here in particular, which looks like the end got quite pinched and maybe torn off. So I'll talk a little bit about that afterward. So and just looking at some uh, scissors, looking and uh, dry and the water bath. So a little bit of difference there, maybe thrown off by this this one here. Okay, so that was our scissors. So now we're going to look at kitchen shears. And kitchen shears in general are very much like the scissors. 
These ones do have a little bit of a serrated blade and they're actually a much better quality shear. So I thought I might get a slightly better cut with these ones. Again, looking at the first cut, we can see again this sort of splitting and the uh, uh, higher uh, surface area in these, just like the scissors in day six. So same thing, we're still seeing a little bit of browning on day six on the ends, a little bit in here. And in day 11, again, not worsening too, too much, maybe a little worse and still looking very similar on the ends. These ones actually maybe look a little better uh, with a little less browning, but you can see a lot of damage there and uh, serration or um, surface area. And then looking at the water uh, ones that were dipped in water, these ones just coincidentally also had some really big uh, tears and whatnot. So very, very not clean cuts. Here we are seeing a little bit of oxidation on day six on both shots there. And again, we do see the sort of curving in at the end where it gets narrower. That uh, does tend to come afterwards with the oxidation there. And then I was missing uh, a picture here. So this is how they are on uh, day 11. So actually looking not bad um, with the water bath on day 11, but we do st still see some damage there. And then here's a little comparison between the dry and the wet harvest there. So hard to make a difference. This, this pink in here is a little deceptive. Uh, so similar, but uh, maybe a little better with the, uh, sh the water. We've got some, you know, these are decent looking on the ends here. So, okay. Now we're going to just take a look at the shears and scissors on day 11 kind of compared to each other. So here's our scissors regular and our scissors with water. Just get myself out of the way there. And then here we can see the kitchen shears and the kitchen shears plus water here. So uh, I, I look at this and I can't really tell much of a difference. So, so I'd say like these methods are both kind of very, very similar in, in the outcome in the end. All right, so let's look at our dull knife. Okay, so now let's look at our dull knife. Uh, which, as I mentioned, was not so dull after all. So here it is on day one, and you can still see a little bit of roughness in these cuts, um, but you know, you get them, you get some fairly smooth lines in there, but uh, so it definitely not as good as the sharper knife, uh, or but not as bad as I would have expected. On day six, the ends are still looking pretty good, but we can see a little bit of browning, so not perfect. We can see it in here as well. You can see like these are nice cuts. And so the browning is really limited to that end where it's a little rougher. Uh, you end up, can, you can work its way up the stem a little bit more. So we don't see that as much with these. Maybe not my best photos there. And then here we are on day 11. So it just seems day 11 still looking pretty good on the ends, a little bit of browning, more than I'd like to see. And we're still seeing them pretty clean on the ends here with just a little bit. Now, day 11 would technically be four days past your seven-day ideal period, so not bad. And you can still see, actually tell from here, the stems are in pretty nice shape and looking pretty firm uh, and, and feeling, they felt pretty good as, as I went through there as well. So looking at the dull knife and water, here you get a really good look. There's some really nice clean cuts here. This is a beauty here. Nice ones here as well, uh, but also a little bit of tearing. So. Um, again, I'll talk a little bit about that in a bit. Here we are in day six with just a little bit of uh, browning. And same thing here, just a little bit, but not too bad. And then day 11, where, where again, we're not seeing uh, too much change. Uh, I'm missing a photo here. So here you can see, you know, day 11, we still got some pretty nice looking shoots. Uh, and they were stored in the fridge in a Ziploc bag. So, uh, you know, somewhat how they would be stored in a commercial basis. So looking at just day 11, here's the dull knife, and then here's dull knife plus water, which looks like it might be a little better, but you know, just a slight, slight difference there. Okay, now let's get onto the sharp knife, where we're kind of expecting this to be much, much better than all the other results there. So taking a look at our cuts here on day one, again, some really nice clean cuts in here but also like a little bit of tearing, a little bit of unevenness. Um, as we move on to day six, still little, little bits of browning here, but not too bad. Um, 
and we can see it in here as well. And here it's like the cut is clean and then where we've got this little bit hanging over is where we're seeing some damage. This one here actually looks pretty good. I'm not sure what it looks like on the bottom. And then on day 11, again, we're not seeing much change in the end. So day 11, these are actually still looking pretty good. There's some little bits of brown there. I mean, this photo is deceptive because a lot of them are pointing down. And then we can see here again, just little bits of brown. So looking pretty good overall after 11 days. Once we move into the sharp knife with water, again, seeing some nice clean cuts in here. Some little angles, uh, which is an interesting thing, maybe just in how you hold when you're holding. If you kind of push them over, you'll end up going through it at a bit of an angle. Day six, again, just a little bit of browning, but very little on there. And we're not seeing much in here either. But again, little bits on the edges. And then on day 11, we're seeing a little bit in here still. That's not the best photo. And these ones are actually looking pretty good in here. There's a bit of damage and a bit of discoloration, but overall looking pretty good. So if we look at water versus uh, the dry versus water, I mean, they're, they, again, they are actually are still pretty close. The water in this case might be a little better, but that could just be the angle the different stems are, are showing up here in this image. And the reason I did that is my, my experience is that uh, without that water bath on a commercial scale, sunflower really does not keep even nearly as long and you get the oxidation much quicker. So that's something I've experienced, uh, you know, doing the, this experiment just here in my kitchen, there might have been some details in terms of harvest that I might have missed a bit and, and uh, just didn't get as much. So looking at all, so these are the dry, uh, these are the ones that didn't get a water bath, just but taking as a look as a comparison between them. Once we see them all together, we do see the scissors and the shears definitely having a little bit more darkness and oxidation at the end, whereas with both the dull, dull knife and the sharp knife, there is less browning, though there is still a little bit. And you can really see the difference in the surface area and the roughness between the shears and scissors and the, the two knives. And so we can really get a sense that probably our, our knife is going to make a difference. Uh, again, our dull knife was not that dull. It was actually reasonably sharp. Uh, and that's my fault for just taking good care of my knives, which I, I try not to do all the time. Uh, so I'm going to find a really bad knife and, and, uh, and try, try this experiment uh, in the future. Um, so I think we are seeing that um, we are getting slightly better results with the knife. The other thing to consider is the, the sharp knife glides through the crop really easily. So it makes harvest a lot easier and a lot quicker. And so that's something to consider in all this as well. You do have to sharpen it and hone it while you're doing a major harvest. But I still think overall it's going to be much less effort and much quicker. Okay. So a few conclusions here that I'll throw out. Slide myself down out of the way. So the knife cuts appear to result in less brown and browning than the scissor cuts. I think that was fairly uh, uh, clear, even though I thought there would be more of a distinction, to be honest. The dull knife results are invalid, as I mentioned already, because the dull knife was not dull. Um, I think it's also too important to, to recognize that each cutting type has variability in its outcome. So the thing I wanted to talk about here briefly was when you're making a cut with a knife or scissors, you tend to grab a section of, of product either, you know, either way. You're going to make a cut through with a knife or with scissors. And if you think about scissors, I mean, there's different cutting points. There's the stuff that gets cut right in the joint. There's the stuff in the middle and there's the stuff right at the end. And some that kind of just gets snipped in half and kind of torn off. Same thing with the knife. <coughs> Excuse me. A knife blade uh, might have a little bit of variability and sharpness, sharpness along its edge. And as you push it through, there's going to be, uh, you know, you're going to have different contact with different stems while you're doing your harvest. If you're pulling a little bit on one, you might cause stems to break off a little earlier with just a slight cut. And so within any cut, there's going to be some variability based on factors like that. I would say the water bath maybe resulted in a slight improvement in quality. And I know from experience, uh, it actually is generally a, a very big improvement in, col in uh, quality with sunflower, but I know others have had luck not doing the water bath. And I would say that general leaf health is uniform among all the cut types. 
So, I mean, I didn't show a lot of the leaf and the whole, the whole plant, but as I was handling them, I noticed that they all had about the same level of firmness. There wasn't any browning or deterioration on the rest of the stem or on the top. So it's not like that browning on the end was creating this huge cascading effect up, in, up into the stem and, and, the, and the, um, the cotyledons. Now that may change later on if you're looking at, say, a two-week uh, storage time. We, we could see differences there. So I will take a look at that to get a sense of where that is. But I think if we look at a hard, uh, sort of target seven to ten day storage period, which is which is a pretty good storage time for a very delicate crop, uh, we can see that we, you would probably have a pretty good advantage using a knife over scissors. Uh, your harvest will be a little cleaner, a little quicker, and I think you're going to have a more aesthetically pleasing crop because you're not going to have that browning at the ends, and that's going to make your customers quite happy. So that is a summary of the results for our sunflower with the cutting experiments. I do have the pea to do next. Uh, that should happen soon. I missed my day six uh, photos because uh, I'm really busy, uh, but I'll do day 11 photos and see. And pea's a little trickier because it's a darker stem, so I, I will start on that. But it may turn out that the photos don't draw as much as they did with the sunflower uh, because of that. But I'll see what I can do. So I hope that was a useful look at the impacts of different cutting methods on crops. And I think it'd be worth trying something like this yourself and with a variety of crops. You may find it applies to some and doesn't to others, but you really can learn a lot just from doing the experiment and, and getting more acquainted with your crop. So uh, yeah, give it a try and good luck.